5 septembre 2015, les Nations Unies ont publié sous le nom de Agenda 2030 les 17 objectifs qu'ils veulent atteindre au cours des 15 prochaines années. Tandis que son prédécesseur, l'Agenda 21, se limitait presque uniquement à des aspects écologiques, le nouveau programme vise presque tous les domaines de la vie. Même si l'Agenda 2030 donne l'impression positive qu'il s'agit de prospérité, de paix et de justice sur une planète saine, en y regardant de plus près, on s'aperçoit cependant que tout n'est qu'un nouvel ordre mondial pour réduire tous les peuples en esclavage. Et voici en grande ligne les outils prévus. La centralisation des banques. L'abolition de l'argent liquide pour s'assurer un contrôle total de toutes les relations d'affaires. L'approvisionnement en nourriture régulé globalement par une minorité, surtout avec quelques grands groupes qui emploient principalement le génie génétique. L'interdiction de toute tentative d'autarcie. La suppression des contrôles nationaux sur les infrastructures et les ressources, en particulier les terres et l'eau, à force de privatisation dictée par le FMI, comme on le voit déjà actuellement en Grèce. La dissolution de la souveraineté nationale à l'échelle mondiale, l'imposition rigoureuse d'un monopole global de l'information, la surveillance généralisée, mind control, au moyen de la radiotechnologie mobile, des prétendues zones de libre-échange, TTIP et CETA, pour achever d'amener complètement l'Europe sous le diktat de l'oligarchie des banques américaines. Des taxes forcées sous n'importe quel prétexte, par exemple dans le domaine de l'environnement, des réfugiés, etc. Des guerres d'agression et de destruction initiées par les États-Unis et l'OTAN, sous couvert de missions de maintien de la paix et de la démocratie, le tout dans l'optique de déstabiliser l'Europe en l'inondant avec des réfugiés pour en fin de compte pouvoir la réduire en esclavage. La citation de l'écrivain et journaliste allemand Ludwig Börn résume bien cela. « Si les gouvernements sont malades, alors les peuples doivent garder le lit. » L'enfer t'attend. State or wherever where you are in the world, um, and you'll invariably see that they have signed up to Agenda 21 and they're supporting Agenda 2030. And because these um, this global agenda is being introduced locally, they are hiding the global coordination of it. Oh no, it's just a local council initiative. Oh really? Same initiative with that council and that council and that council and that country. This is, this is how the, the thing's being uh, systematically um, hidden. So here, from their own documents, are some of the headlines of what these agendas um, want to do. Um, this is Agenda 21, uh, first of all. They want an end to national sovereignty. Now, when you look at these different agendas and documents, and then you, you compare them with the wish lists of the global um, social engineering organizations, the lists virtually are identical. And one that comes up again and again is the end to national sovereignty. This is what the European Union is all about. It's there to take national sovereignty away as this Hunger Games society unfolds. Now here is one of the great ironies Um, that so-called progressives who are up in arms, understandably, about what has happened with Grenfell Tower and about austerity uh, programs, uh, which are all part of Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, they vehemently support, most of them anyway, they go out on marches demanding that these crazy old people that voted to come out of the European Union 
have their decision overturned and we stay in. Yes, we stay in a European Union which is run by um, dark suit, unelected bureaucrats that virtually no one can name and is there to systematically take away national sovereignty in line with Agenda 21, 2030. And they also support basically open border immigration. And one of the key reasons that the migrant crisis has been systematically created, and it was, I mean, the evidence is overwhelming, is to bring lots of different cultures together to dilute the um, indigenous culture for a very simple reason. It's all psychological in the end. It's all a mind game. One of the greatest um, forces of resistance to the end of national sovereignty is a sense of national identity. I mean, I'm not into nationalism and national identity. I just see everything as consciousness, but that's just me. But large numbers of people with a sense of national identity will resist having sovereignty taken away in its entirety because of that sense of national identity. What the uh, systematically created migrant crisis is about, it, on one level anyway, is ending that sense of national identity. So the resistance to the end of um, sovereignty, national sovereignty, will be massively diluted. Something that's happening, by the way. <clears throat> Here you go. State planning, this is Agenda 21. State planning and management of all land resources, ecosystems, deserts, forests, mountains, oceans and fresh water, agriculture, rural development, biotechnology and ensuring equity, equal slavery. Um, what that means is the centralization of power over every aspect of human life. Something I've been warning about. They want a world government to oversee this. And we're moving towards that all the time. The European Union is the, and the, 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 such like the so-called super states are the, the next strata down in this Hunger Games structure from the world government that they want to introduce. The state to define the role of business and financial resources. That's the, the centralization of power over all business and all uh, finance. Um, abolition of private property. Apparently it's not sustainable, uh, but that won't, that won't apply to the less than 1%. The end of private property means um, you're taking away security from people and you're making them dependent on um, outside uh, forces then for where they live. Restructuring the family unit. This is on the wish list of all these social um, engineering organizations. They want an end to um, the family unit because they want the state to take over control of um, the upbringing of children so they can be programmed with the state's mentality from the earliest possible age. This is um, uh, why um, parental power is over their children is being eroded and eroded and eroded and handed to schools and handed to bureaucrats. This is why around the world, not least in Britain, you have this phenomenal, phenomenal number of children taken uh, for spurious reasons from um, loving parents by social services um, who, are, who are on financial incentives to do it. Uh, these are all these things are connected. You have to connect the dots before you see the picture. Um, people told what their job will be. We're talking about um, centralized fascist dictatorships here, or a dictatorship globally in the end. Um, major restrictions on movement. So um, we're seeing uh, moves towards that, making it more and more difficult to travel. And now we come to this part of the agenda that is uh, specific to 
situations like Grenfell Tower. These are the creation of human settlement zones. High density micro apartments which allow 24-7 surveillance of everything that you do. Um, and they're being brought about by um, not upkeeping and repairing property in areas you want people out of and forcing them into the areas where you want to um, densely locate them. Um, and um, also, like I say, with um, increasing prices to make it impossible for people to live in certain areas. And then once, once um, you um, are forced out of the area you live, well, you go and live where you're designated to live and more and more these mega cities for the um, uh, what are now the middle and working classes um, start to, 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 to be created. Um, and more and more the, the land is cleared in the designated um, uh, capitals for um, the rich and powerful. Now, Agenda 2030, like I say, voted um, into being at the um, uh, UN General Assembly in 2015. What this is using to bring about the same end is the technique of tell them what you want to do in a way that they couldn't possibly argue with. So on the list of um, goals of Agenda um, 2030 is no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities, sustainable cities, that, that's, um, they're the human settlement zones, and communities, responsible consumption, production, climate action, um, I'll come to that in a second, protecting life below water and life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions and partnerships to achieve these ends. Now, of course, that is a load of meaningless frickin' platitudes. Um, what that actually means to, to so-called achieve that, they don't really want to achieve that, they're just telling you they do, um, is the centralization of power over all those areas of human life on a global level, because they'll say we can't um, we can't achieve these uh, laudable ends without um, the global power to do it. And people have asked me, um, and I understand it many times. You're saying that this whole human caused climate change is a giant hoax. Yeah. Well, why would they do that? I'll tell you why. I've just told you why. Because Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 are being justified, massively justified, by needing to change society to protect from climate change, caused, they say, by human activity, but not. And so we have another irony now. Not only are progressives who protest about Grenfell Tower and protest about austerity, um, supporting a, a European Union that is fundamentally part of the um, Hunger Games Society structure that is creating the um, austerity and creating the situation where the Grenfell Towers can happen. But these progressives are also vehemently saying everything must change to protect the world from climate disaster, which is a fundamental manufactured excuse to introduce Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. And this cognitive dissonance of opposing one thing but supporting another that's creating the thing you oppose is through pure, undiluted ignorance with a hell of a lot of arrogance thrown in. P 
people say, oh, we, we, don't, we don't read the Daily Mail, we don't watch um, Fox News. Yeah, okay, where do you get your information from then? Oh, we get it from The Guardian and MSNBC and The New York Times. Yeah. Think of a postage stamp. The media organisations that you condemn are there on the postage stamp. The ones you read and watch are there on the same postage stamp. They're just a different, um, slightly uh, uh, differently emphasised expression of the same information source. And thus, you have basically the same news packaged in a different way. What people need to do is get off the frickin' postage stamp and start looking at information outside the mainstream media that is available, and then they might have a chance of knowing what's going on. And stop um, campaigning for and promoting organizations and ends that are part of the very creation of that which you say you don't like. And if you have a target population, and it's a vast population because you're talking about virtually everyone who's not in the, the tiny few, then what you have to do to control that population is to divide and rule it. You have to set it at war with itself. So it is so focused on fighting between itself that people don't look up in different factions, different religions, different income brackets, different political beliefs. They don't all look up and say, hold on, the strings attached to me and the strings attached to you, there's only one bloke holding them. Yes, exactly. Human society is being played off against each other all the time. Migrants and non-migrants, this colour against that colour, this religion against that religion, this income bracket against this income bracket, this political belief system against this political belief system. And I look on, if my head shakes anymore, it'll probably fall off at some point. We need to, to stop looking to politicians to, to, to make things happen. These political parties are connected to the same system that is driving the Hunger Games society, although most are so ignorant they don't even know it. And people show in times of tragedy the true nature of what we could be. But you see it again and again. You see this humanity coming out. Then the, the charity record comes out and we go through this process. And then, once it's out of the headlines, it's out of sight and it's out of mind. And everything goes back to how it was before. We've got to make a stand at some point. And we've got to come together and put down all these ridiculous, ludicrous things that are there to divide us. And start sorting this out together. In mutual support, irrespective of background, creed, whatever. Because if we don't, this Hunger Games society will unfold because it is unfolding now. And those with a lot of money in the bank, but not part of this elite, we now have something called bail-ins. Bail-ins are when a bank crashes, they're not bailed out by taxpayers via governments collectively. But the bail-in means they can go direct to the accounts of customers of that bank and just take their money. 
That's how fragile it all is. That's how fragile people who think they're okay really are to this evil that is manipulating human society. And that's the point. Nous allons continuer selon notre plan. Est-ce que ça concerne le ministère de la Santé ou celui de l'armée Les deux. Ces gens sont vivants ou morts Tenez-les Nous l'ignorons.